What is good, guys? It's Ray J back with another video. And this one wants to break down what's going on with the overall market and talk about the very important pieces of data that are going to be coming out very, very soon to cause more volatility. I'm also going to break down what's going on with SPY, Tesla, NVIDIA, the QQQ, and a couple of other tickers and break down some very important levels to watch for as we progress during the day. But before I break anything down about all this information, before I get into any more details, let me just mention a couple of things. I am firstly not a financial planner, so take none of this as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Weeble link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Weeble, the link down below and deposit any amount of money into the account, you are guaranteed up to 12 free stocks. The offer ends very soon in just about eight days. So check it out before they run out. Anyways, let's break down what's going on with the markets. So right now, we're actually seeing the market slowing down quite a bit. SPY is currently down about 0.3%. Tesla is down a little bit in the pre-market. And so are many other stocks from Apple to the QQQ and the list goes on. But the question that comes to mind is how will the market move going forward and is the market about to sink even lower? And the answer is we can't truly say that's just yet. And you have to look at our current support levels and you have to remember what's about to happen to the market right now. So the news is coming out that uh, there have been some worries about inflation potentially reviving uh, because of the new reports coming out over there by Wall Street about uh, inflation potentially increasing again with oil prices going up and we actually saw an increase in oil just yesterday alone so that going down and this causing some futures to drop this is leading to some concerns for the markets now what else is very important though is that this data that's coming out later on is going to dictate the entire flow of the day in my opinion now right now we just had the imports and exports data coming out the exports were actually very very close to what the forecast was the imports were also very very close so nothing too crazy but what's going to be very big is first off we have a fed speaker that's going to be starting like about now collins from the fed is going to be speaking and then we have some big data coming out 15 minutes after the market opens. We have the S&P Global Services PMI report coming out. Now, this is going to give us a good understanding of how the economy is looking. If it's below 50, that's going to not look too good. If it's above 50, that's going to show like a little bit more uh, strength, at least to some extent. And it's going to let us know how the current services sectors are doing in the economy. So for the first 15 minutes, that's going to be very, very important. And then for the first 30 minutes at 10 o'clock a.m. Eastern time, we have even more data, more PMI data coming out, the ISM services data. That's going to cause more and more volatility. And then don't forget that later on during the day, starting at 2 p.m., going into 3 p.m. Eastern time, we have Beige and Logan from the Fed giving some speeches, which could also lead to more volatility. So just listen to them very carefully. But the biggest things coming out are going to be 15 minutes and 30 minutes after the market opens make sure you're prepared for this so the market is currently dropping approaching this data it's always a possibility that once the data comes out the market gets like a bounce tries to fill these gaps but at the same time the exact opposite could also happen because we are looking more bearish overall at least as of right now now even, even if we do like get like a small bounce try to fill this gap we're still technically on a decline and it doesn't really change the fact that the market is still favoring the bears a little bit more for spy and just a couple of other tickers so let's break down some very important levels on spy this thing is currently holding 448 as support if it breaks below that the 50 ema is at 447.03 and if that breaks the next important support is going to be 446.5 now we're looking more bearish it looks like the bears are getting more and more control over this but don't forget we're going to be gapping down and we're, we have this gap all the way up to about this like 449 area so if you know if we do end up opening down here and let's just say the data is decent there's a possibility of this thing pushing up to fill the gap now, when we open up, the market may just try to hold a little bit, kind of range trade a bit. And then we're going to see what the reaction is 15 minutes after the market opens. If we get a positive reaction, the market could bounce and we could see this thing go up to fill the gap and SPY retest 449. If it's a negative reaction, SPY is going to start sinking down to 446.5. So be prepared for that. Remember, 15 minutes after the market opens, that's when things are going to get crazy. From a technical standpoint, this looks more bearish overall. So even if we do get a little bounce, we could continue to sink later on or we could just continue dropping from here. I want to be honest with everyone. We do look more bearish overall, but just watch for volatility for the first 15 and 30 minutes. For Tesla, it's looking pretty good so far because uh, Tesla has some relative strength. It's still at 255. It barely dropped and it's gaining more and more potential to hold these levels. Now, when we look at the 30 minutes time frame on Tesla, we have the support right here at the 20 EMA or around this 255 flat area. 
If that breaks, Tesla breaks below that, you have 253.5 as the next critical support. And then below that, we have 252.5. For resistance, you have 258 as the critical resistance. Uh, also 257.5 to 258, basically, and then 260 above that. Now, how does Tesla look in my eyes? It looks relatively strong so far. We, we've been forming this like much larger cup and handle like formation if you want to go that route. And, you know, it's still holding up very, very nicely. There's still potential for it to try to hold up. But we have to see how it reacts with all this data dropping. And uh, as of right now, it has more relative of strength. So if the market does sink, Tesla's not going to sink as hard as of right now. It's not going to be too bad for it. It's just getting more and more strength. And if the market bounces, Tesla's going to get a very nice bounce as well. So what? how is this looking as of right now? The four hours is trying to curl a little bit. It looks like it's just chopping around as of right now. And this is kind of like what I told you yesterday. We might see some choppy price action between 255 and 260 because that's what happened historically right over here. So we may see us start off with this. And we'll see how the data looks, and that may affect it after that but for now just be very patient expect some sideways price action between 255 and 260 and then wait and see what happens with the data but that's going to cause more and more volatility now for apple this is very interesting apple is down quite a bit it's at 188 as of right now if it breaks below that we have supported 187.5 below that there's 187 and then we have 186.5 below that. So Apple is very, very tight when it comes to these supports. If Apple tries to get some kind of bounce, you know, we have this big gap all the way up to 189. If we get a bounce off the PMI, it could come up to fill this gap. If it's the opposite, it's going to come all the way down to 187 or lower. From a technical standpoint, it's looking a little bit weaker as of right now. We formed a bearish divergence off this pop, and it looks like it's starting to cool off a little bit, but there's no confirmed move until we break below our very important EMA. I believe it's on the 30 minutes time frame. We are technically below this EMA right here, but we haven't broken the low from yesterday, so that's going to be a level to watch for. If it breaks below that, it's going to start sinking even more. And then, you know, we have like the 200 even below that. So here's my view of Apple, guys. Uh, I'm on a bear on Apple. The answer is not entirely. Uh, I, I just think that there's going to be a rug pull coming, but it could always like bounce in the future, like, you know, later on. But let me explain what I mean by that. So we have this bearish divergence developing on Apple. We have a double bearish divergence on the four hour and also on the 30 minutes time frame. There's like a, there's a triple or quadruple bearish divergence that has been developing on it. This tells me that after Apple's big event or approaching its event, there's going to be a rug pull coming, I would say within the next week. So by next, by the coming Tuesday, Apple is going to likely sink down after it unveils the iPhone or if something else like that happens, or even a little bit below, but before that, excuse me, we might see something like that happen. That's what this is suggesting with this bearish divergence. There's going to be some downside coming. Uh, it could hold up and try to like maintain these higher levels for a little bit longer. It could still hold up temporarily, but after the iPhone event, something else could change. So I want to be as honest as possible. The QQQ is currently down 0.31%, uh, testing 376. Now, we're going to be watching, do we get a bounce from the PMI report? If we get it, it's going to try to fill this gap at 378. If we break down, if it doesn't really bounce, 375 is going to be 376, uh, flat, and 375 are going to be our two levels. And below 375, we have uh, 374 flat. So we have quite a few levels which are going to be very, very important for it. You can't forget about this breakout area right here at 374.25. Uh, just watch it very carefully at these levels, especially at the 200 EMA on the 30 minutes time frame. That's going to be a very key support for the day, and we'll see how this thing looks. However, I just want to note that on the four hour time frame, it's looking more bearish, which suggests that downside is likely imminent. But let's wait and see what happens with PMI first to determine which way this thing will end up moving. So that's going to be very, very telling and very, very important. Anyways, when it comes to NVIDIA, this thing is once again a little bit a uh, week in the pre-market, but not, not that bad. It's only down about a, you know, 0.32%, nothing too crazy. Uh, we're going to be watching it. How does it react to this 20 EMA? Could we get above 485? If the data causes the market to sink more, NVIDIA is going to come all the way down to the 50, if not 475. The four hour time frame is looking a little bit more bearish for NVIDIA. So it, it does look like this thing is going to come down in the future over the next, like, I would say week and a half to two weeks. We have this imbalances that which are down here, and this entire chart is starting to show a shift in the market structure, meaning that this thing is starting to make this lower high here. A lower low has been developed. If it establishes another lower high, it could just start sinking even lower. That's what it's looking like as of right now. But let's just wait and see what happens with PMI first before we make any more conclusions. Besides that, uh, the VIX is up just a little bit as of right now. 
uh, if it keeps pushing, this could be a sign of a big change in the trend, especially if we get across on the PPO. Still waiting for that. The dollar is pretty flat right now. It's only down like 0.1%. It looks like it's going to cool off just a little bit. Maybe the market bounces just a little bit, but we'll see if the dollar could find its support and then start pushing higher from this 104.38 area. So the dollar is not looking that bad. Uh, overall, it's still on a strong uptrend. It's not necessarily like breaking down just yet. Uh, we'll see maybe a little cool off first before this thing starts pushing. And we're going to be watching Amazon. This is down quite a bit in the pre-market as well. I mean, we have a bearish cross on our PPO. 135 is the target I was talking about. I still think it's on the table. I'm going to be watching 135 very carefully on Amazon over the next couple of trading days. All right, guys. So anyways, hopefully this video was helpful for all of you. The market is gapping down, but don't forget we have some huge data coming out 15 minutes and 30 minutes after the market opens. Starting at 15 minutes after open or at 9.45 a.m., that's when we're going to see a very big move and a reaction to the PMI report. We'll see what that causes. And as of right now, uh, the overall technicals are still valid on like SPY looking more bearish, not to mention like Apple potentially getting a rug pull in the future, uh, depending on its event. And Tesla, once again, is looking relatively strong, not, nothing too horrible so far. So watch for it to range trade for a bit and then see the big reaction from there. All right. So hopefully this video was helpful. Have a great day, everyone. Remain calm, cool, and collected. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you and peace out.